Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, to discuss further into polar coordinates and now look at symmetry of them and how you could use symmetry to uh, save time in graphing uh, polar coordinate curves. So let's jump right in. So when we sketch polar curves, it is sometimes helpful to take advantage of symmetry. And what I'm going to go over is three rules or properties of polar coordinates, which is pretty interesting. So part A or part one, if a polar equation is unchanged when theta is replaced by negative theta, the curve is symmetric about the polar axis. And we can see this visually. So let's just draw a polar coordinate system. So this is the polar axis like that. The polar axis is that horizontal one across there. So let's say we had a point here, and this is uh, determined by the polar coordinate form where you have the angle theta like that. This point's going to be r and theta, where this distance is r from the pole or the origin right here. So that's the pole, just for reference, yeah, or the origin. So if we replace this, yeah, if we replace this with a negative uh, theta like that, if the uh, formula still remains the same, meaning that the distance to the center is still the same, that is r doesn't change right here, then what we end up having is, well, it's symmetric. So you could see this visually, if you draw, draw this all the way across here, and then draw a line across like that, this is going to be r, and then if we're looking at a negative theta, we go backwards, negative theta, this distance is still r. So r negative theta. And as you can see here, the symmetry, it is a mirror image about the polar axis like that. So that's the mirror image or, or symmetric about the polar axis. And now if we were to graph, let's just graph a, a curve around it that is a mirror image. So let's say you have a point like this or a curve, and this would just be a mirror image across. So and then if it goes across like that, etc., and a shape would look something like this. Should have made it <laughs> a bit simpler. So yeah, something like that. And here I just uh, quickly fixed that up. So as you can see, it's a mirror image. Whenever you go anywhere theta, if you do a negative theta, if it's the same distance, you have a reflection across the polar axis. And now let's look at the second property, part B. If the equation is unchanged when r is replaced by negative r, or when theta is replaced by theta plus pi, the curve is symmetric about the pole. And I'll explain that in a bit. So this means that the curve uh, remains unchanged if we rotate it by 180 degrees about the origin, which is the pole. And that's by this pi, number pi is in radians. Uh, yeah, pi radians is 180 degrees in, uh, yeah, it's 180 in degrees. So if we look at an example how this will look like, if we sketch this across, there's a polar axis like that. There is the pole at the origin like that. Let's say we have a point here, and this point across like that is going to be our r distance. This point, let's say that's theta. So this is going to be r and theta. Now if we replace uh, r with negative r, the distance, uh, yeah, and if it remains the same, then, then this just means that uh, what we're going to be looking at is, is a negative r, so we'll have to go backwards. So this distance is going to be, well, absolute value of r is just the distance to the center. And I'll draw it actually a bit better here. So then this point is this number, whatever this angle is, and you have to go backwards. This is going to be negative r and theta. Yeah, so when we replace uh, r with negative r, we still have the same formula because this distance is still r like that. And also it's the same thing as, as moving this by pi. Because remember, this is just a flat line. That's just 180, 180 degrees. That's just pi like that. So then if we go theta plus pi, we get we can go all the way across here like that. This is uh, theta or theta plus pi like that plus 180 degrees or pi radians. Yeah, so that means that this right here equals to uh, I'll write negative r theta equals to well positive r. You can just write positive r but then change the angle. Uh, this is going to be theta plus uh, pi like that. And now to illustrate uh, an example of this, well, let's just draw one like this across there. Then that means it's going to be, if you look at the negative side of it, it's an it's a exact reflection across this way. It's going to look something like that across. 
And likewise, if this way you have something like that here, just a quick example. And there it is, perfect mirror reflection. If you get here, if that's positive, then you go all the way across here to the negative side, across. So it's a, a reflection or a, it's just basically symmetric about this pole right there. And all it is is just a rotation across by 180 degrees. And now the last part I want to look at, last property is part C. If the equation is unchanged when uh, theta is replaced by pi minus theta, the curve is symmetric about the vertical line theta equals to pi over two. And remember that pi over two is just 90 degrees. So if we were to look at this, let's draw something looks like this. And now we have it across here and and let's uh, again start from there's a polar axis. Let's say we have a point across here. This is going to be r theta. In other words, distance across is r. And then this angle is theta like that. Now if we replace it by pi minus theta, what that means is, well, we know this full thing is pi like this. This is just pi. Then that means if we want to go pi minus theta, so then we'll have an angle across here. And I'll draw one that looks exactly like this across. This would be over here, like that. And I'll say this is r. This is going to be theta, like that. Yeah, so then this is perfectly symmetric, like that this is a mirror image across. And where this, this angle across from here to here, that's just pi over 2 or 90 degrees. And now if we were to draw, let's draw an angle. Yeah, let's draw one across here. <laughs> this is getting a bit crazy. So that's just going to be pi, this full angle, of the full flat angle like that, subtracted by, uh, by uh, theta. So that's just going to be pi minus theta across. And again, we get this exact same point there. So this point here, this is just r, and now the angle is changed to pi minus theta. So the r remains the exact same, thus it's symmetric about this mirror image, or about this uh, pi over 2 um, angle across, which is, ju which is just 90 degrees. And then you could uh, draw an example one, which just looks something, let's, let's say that something looks like this. So it has to be symmetric. And let's say like that. And uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, just fix that up. So yeah, just, uh, <laughs> it's not the scale, uh, not, it's not perfectly <laughs> symmetric my drawing, but yeah, you get the idea. And now we could actually revisit some of the examples in my earlier videos uh, to save time. So note that in examples, um, in, in examples six and eight, just capitalize that. So in examples six and eight that I did in my earlier videos, uh, they are in fact symmetric about the polar axis. Yeah, just quickly fix that up. So they're symmetric about the polar axis since cosine theta equals to cosine negative theta. So make sure to watch my earlier videos, put the links in the description below. And I'll, uh, I'll uh, illustrate those in a bit. But basically, because we have this cosine theta equals cosine negative theta, and you can easily see that if you just draw a little curve like this. Yeah, so if you have an angle like this, this is going to be theta. If this is A, this is, let's call this B across there, and let's call this C. So then this cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse A over C, and likewise the negative side would be across here, negative theta like that. Let's move this A here. So negative theta, so if we have a negative theta, it's going to be, well, this, this distance is still C, this is, this is going to be negative B across there. So this just equals to, well, the exact same thing, A over C, that's positive over C. This is just going to be cosine uh, negative theta, just for reference, like that. Now because we have that, that means that in example six, so recall from example six, that the angle or the uh, function we had was R equals to two cosine theta, and then this equals to, because that's cosine theta, we could just replace that with negative theta, and again, that's uh, I believe that's the first um, property right here. When you could change this, and it's the same angle, uh, when theta is replaced by negative theta, it's symmetric about the polar axis. And in fact, it is because, remember, this was just a circle. So recall that it looks like just something like this, it was just a circle, and this is symmetric about uh, this polar axis like that, this mirror image of it. And you could even see this if you draw an angle like this. This is theta. This is across there. It's exactly symmetric. This is negative theta like that. This is r theta. And this is uh, r negative theta like that. 
and this curve is just this function like that. And now recall from example eight, the function that we did before was uh, was something like this. Now this was r equals to cosine two theta. Now this is the exact same thing we, uh, as uh, as above. This is just going to be cosine negative two theta. And you could even do the same thing if you replace this theta with two theta. It's just going to be <laughs> uh, same thing. Cosine two theta equals to cosine. Uh, negative two theta. So you can just multiply it by, <laughs> by two, nothing's gonna change there. So yeah, you could just do that. So then that means uh, it's gonna be again symmetric about the polar axis, which in fact it was. If you recall, this was actually a four leafed rose. So it looks something like this. And then it goes up like that. Like this. Yeah, so we had a four leaf rose like that. Yeah, so it's a mirror image across this right there. So mirror uh, across the polar axis. And you could even see that if you just draw an angle like this, this is theta, then at this point, this is gonna be r theta, the negative is exactly symmetric about it. So this is going to be r negative theta, and this angle is negative theta. And furthermore, the curves in example seven and eight, as we this one eight as well, are uh, symmetric about phi, uh, theta equals to pi over two. So that means this is the angle pi over two. And as you can see, this one's actually a uh, reflection across again. So that's symmetric about that uh, that uh, angle as well, because uh, this is sine theta minus minus. Uh, I mean, sine pi minus theta equals sine theta and cosine two times uh, pi minus theta equals cosine two theta. And I'll explain this in a bit and I'll, I'll recap on part seven uh, or example seven shortly. Yeah, this is because example seven included a sine. And again, this is based on which property? I think this is part, um, yeah, part C or part three. So when we replace theta with pi minus theta and it's the same, uh, it's same R function or the same value for R, then that's a mirror reflection across theta equals to pi over two. So let's uh, first show this part, that sine equals that. So if we have angle like this, uh, theta, and again, this is, let's say this is r, and then let's call this uh, opposite sine, like this on a right angle triangle, I'll call this b, and this distance a. Then this part here, sine of theta equals to, well, opposite over, a j, over a hypotenuse, b over r. And likewise, if we draw this part across there, this is theta. Let's draw this a bit better. It's going to be mirror reflection across there. And this is uh, f theta like that. And then that means that this, this angle across, remember that's just going to be, as shown above, pi minus theta. Because the full thing is pi, then you subtract this across. So this full thing is pi. That subtract that. Yeah, we get pi minus theta, and then this across is like that. And again, we have the r. This is going to be negative a for the bottom. This is going to be opposite or the adjacent. This is going to be positive b. So that means that now if we look at uh, pi minus theta, so sine pi minus uh, or uh, theta minus pi, this just equals to, again, opposite over hypotenuse, b over r, both positive. So then these equal each other. So this just equals to sine pi minus theta. Yeah, that was just a quick reference. If we use cosine, the, the cosine, remember, it's adjacent. So cosine um, f, uh, theta equals to a over r. But then if you look at uh, cosine, <coughs> uh, Cosine pi minus theta, this equals to, well, there's a negative r, negative a over r. So we can't use that. But, but uh, since we're dealing with two pi like that, let's just look at it uh, this way. So if we look at this, let's call this two, uh, two theta. This is going to be, let's call this r. Uh, this distance is r. I'll just draw this right angle like that. This is going to be a, b. So cosine is going to be of cosine two theta equals to, in this case, a over r. This is separate from those above, so just ignore those. And now if we look at a full 2 pi is, is a full 360 degrees, so that's 2 pi. Yeah, so instead, let's look at that, and now let's draw a perfect symmetric line across here. 
This is going to be across there. This distance is r. Now this this distance across absolute value of I'll just write two uh, two theta. So now this angle across is going to be uh, two pi subtract this by two theta, which is the same thing as writing two over pi minus theta like that. So just uh, factor out the two. Yeah, and as you can see, it goes all the way over here, and that's the same r value. So this just means here, this is going to be r two theta, and this is going to be r uh, two pi minus theta, like that. And now when we take uh, the cosine of this, that's just going to be a over r. This is going to be negative b. So right here, cosine of uh, of two pi minus theta equals two, uh, this part just equals to uh, a over r. a over r, which is the exact same thing. So then these equal to each other. And because these equal to each other, this cosine two theta, that's exactly this one here. So then you know, this part, this also can equal two, and I'll write that down, cosine uh, two pi minus theta like that, and that's the mirror image across there. So you could even see that if you draw this across like that, same exact mirror image across there. So just, just for reference like that. And now if we'll recap on example seven. So example seven, the graph we had was the cardioid. Remember uh, my earlier videos on that, where this function was r equals to one plus sine theta, and the way it looked like was something looks like this, that's the polar axis. It looked like a circle across, some, it looked like a circle like this, all the way across, and then it would loop downwards like that. And again, this is a mirror image across. And yeah, that's a mirror image across there. That's a right angle, a right angle or a 90 degrees pi over two like that, and that's symmetric about that. So, and also want to point out the four leaf rose, example eight is also symmetric about the pole, and you could even see that you could rotate this across anywhere, all it is is just a rotation around the center uh, pole as well. So, you could also see that as well. And also these sy symmetry properties could have been used in sketching those curves to save time. For instance, in example six, we need only to have plotted points for theta is between zero and pi over two, and then reflect about the polar axis to complete the circle and show you that example six as across here. So we could have just graphed well this top part and then reflect it across at the bottom to save time. Anyways, that's all for today. Hope you learned from this pretty extensive video on symmetry using polar coordinates, and these will come in handy uh, in later videos when I go over uh, graphing more polar coordinate uh, functions. Anyways, thanks for watching. Like always, you can download these exact notes in the link in the description below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy.